find more first homes, move more people into bigger homes, and help more people on the move than any other real estate team. Put number one to work for you, Century 21. I'm Phyllis George. From the weather to Wall Street, we'll bring you information you need each day. The CBS Morning News. Watch it in the morning. Use it all day. This is CBS. Well, it soon may be against the law not to wear a seatbelt. The state Senate says it wants drivers to buckle up in Minnesota. Arson is being blamed for a South Minneapolis fire that destroyed an apartment building. The building used to be the home of a number of Cuban refugees arrested yesterday in a drug raid. And a number of exclusive suburban and city lakes may be forced to increase public access or get one if they don't have one or have that property declared uh, condemned. Those stories and more coming up next on the 6 p.m. report. What would it take to change the way you think about post-emergence corn herbicides? A herbicide that stops velvet leaf and your other major broadleaf weeds. A herbicide that stops worry about stalk brittleness, brace root damage, and vapor drift. A herbicide that gives you a longer broadcast application window. The herbicide is Buctril. Ask your dealer about Buctril. It stops weeds, stops worry. Chrysler creates a more powerful laser because the competition is always on our tail and we intend to keep them there. We boost the turbo power. Zero to 50 Laser XE is faster than Toyota Supra. Front wheel drive laser beats Camaro's E28 in the slalom. And Laser XE has advanced electronics and the Chrysler protection plan. Laser XE, the competition is good. We had to be better. Chrysler says thank you, America, for our best year ever with 8.8 .8 annual percentage rate financing for qualified laser buyers. Serving and informing the Twin Cities for four decades. This is WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And now, Dave Moore, Pat Miles, Mike Fairborn, and Ralph John Fritz bring you Channel 4's 6 p.m. report. Good evening, everyone. Pat and Dave have the evening off. A bill requiring Minnesotans to buckle up is on the road to becoming law tonight. Minnesota's Senate today gave uh, tentative approval in a 34 to 28 vote of the mandatory seatbelt law, which sponsors say will save many lives. Pat Kessler is standing by at the Capitol with our report. Pat. Don, supporters of mandatory seatbelts have tried for several years and failed to get this legislation passed. But this year, they believe luck, lobbying, and the federal government are on their side. The Federal Department of Transportation has ordered all new cars to have airbags by 1989, unless states with two-thirds of the U.S. population pass mandatory seatbelt laws. Minnesota took a step toward that today, as the Senate gave preliminary approval to a bill requiring drivers and front seat passengers to buckle up or face a $20 fine. Supporters of the measure said today the simple act of fastening seatbelts could cut Minnesota's traffic deaths by 25%. Opponents agree, but they say the government has no right to interfere in the private lives of its citizens. The action today was only the first vote. It was a test vote, a preliminary vote. There will be another vote next week, probably, and that would be a final vote if it passes the Senate. The House has yet to hold hearings on this bill, although many people say that it will be coming up. This is a, a major step forward for supporters of this bill, however. As I said, they've tried for a long time to get something like this through, and the size of the vote, 34 to 28 today, looks like there is an awful lot of support for it. Don? All right, Pat, thank you very much. Also there, a bill that would raise interest rates you pay on most department store credit cards in Minnesota advanced toward final passage today at the legislature. The maximum interest rate on retail credit cards would go from 16 to 18 percent. Department stores say they need it to cover their costs. The bill passed the House today and now must go to the Senate. It does not affect Visa and MasterCard, by the way. Both of those are governed under the banking laws. A controversial anti-abortion bill passed its first legislative committee last night. The measure, which would require Minnesota to go along with any Supreme Court decision or constitutional amendment tightening restrictions against abortion, was approved by the House Health and Human Services Committee. The bill now goes to the full House for action. Yes. 
Governor Perpich's office said late this afternoon that the governor is now leaning strongly in favor of a one-year farm foreclosure moratorium. That came after this morning's visit by leaders of the farm protest group Groundswell to lobby for the governor to support the moratorium. For one of the farmers, today's plea holds a personal meaning. Jim Langman from Starbuck may lose his farm on the auction block very soon. Its sale is set for April 1st. Foreclosure of Langman's dairy farm has been postponed twice, once because of a protest which prevented the sale. But he is skeptical that the legislative help will come soon enough. He told me that uh, uh, he was on our side. But uh, uh, I'm not going to believe that until uh, we get the moratorium passed and signed. Jim Langman. Minnesota Congressman Bill Frenzel is rumored to be in line for a U.S. cabinet-level post, a U.S. trade representative. The current trade rep, Bill Brock, was nominated to be Labor Secretary yesterday. Jim Gately asked our Republican congressman if he would want the new job. I prefer to uh, stay in Congress. Uh, but if, you wouldn't turn it down if offered? If uh, the president asks, that gets to be a different story. Frenzel has served in Congress since 1971. WCCO Television today won the right to broadcast the next three annual Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournaments. In recent weeks, it seems, the bidding war between local television stations had attracted almost as much attention as the championship game itself. But when the envelopes were open today, the bidding was not even a contest. Mike Walsher reports. Three years ago, WCCO won the TV rights with a bid of $450,000. This morning, high school league officials were stunned to open a winning bid that was more than 150% higher than in 1982. WCCO-TV bid $1,555,000 for the rights. WTCN was second at just over $900,000. KSTP was third, $657,000. And KITN was the fourth bidder at just over $600,000. It's a poker game. You go in and you estimate what the other people are going to make as their shot, and, and we took what we felt was the best, our best shot. Uh, the bottom line is we made a bid that we wanted to win with, and we won. Johnson says WCCO believes it can do all right economically with its bid, although perhaps not as well as in the past years. He says the tournament is the state's premier community event and carries great promotional and civic service value to the station. WTCN general manager Joe Fransgrote said he bid what he thought was economically sound. KSTP officials were said to be all smiles, believing CCO had been lured into making a highly extravagant bid. And high school officials were smiling too. And certainly this amount of dollars will allow the league to expand its services to its 501 member schools. There are lots of phases of the administration of our office. Uh, I would certainly bring to light the chemical awareness program that we've initiated in Minnesota as a model for our whole nation. Mike Walter, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. Coming up next, fallout from yesterday's arrest of Cuban drug smugglers may close a Minneapolis bar. If you think this bank offers you a no-fee visa or MasterCard with checking like First Federal does, think again. No. This place, they don't even offer free checks like First Federal. <laughs> And at a local bank, you probably won't get all the extra checking services First Federal offers. In fact, if you think you can find a checking account that gives you more for your money than our money market checking, don't bank on it. Hmm. First Federal. Check with us and get your money's worth. On the next edition of Our Magazine. Successful people are very similar, and people who are losing in life are very similar. Dr. Irene Casorla has advice on how to be a winner. Plus, Capital's Michael Catlin talks about his character's handicap. There's a myth out there that if you're uh, disabled from the waist down, you have no sexuality. And you'll meet women who work the night shift on the next edition of Our Magazine. Friday morning at 9 on WCCO Television. Enter the next decade. The Audi 5000S. It has become America's fastest selling European sedan. And now, you can lease an Audi 5000S for $298 a month. 
after shocks from yesterday's arrest of 17 Mariel Cubans allegedly involved in a drug and gun smuggling ring reached the Minneapolis City Council today. Don, some council members want to close the bar that police say was headquarters for that drug ring. Much of the surveillance and many undercover buys during that investigation took place at Joe's Bar in South Minneapolis. And Trish Van Pilsen has been following that story and joins us now. Trish. Well, Debbie, Sharon Sales Belton, the council member in that ward, actually wanted to close Joe's Bar several months ago. She'd received numerous complaints about drug drug dealing there. In addition, the bar has been the scene of recent shootings and stabbings, but law enforcement authorities had asked her to hold off until their drug and gun investigation was complete. Now that it is, she's more determined than ever. And again, it's in the interest of the safety of the community. There are a lot of children in the area, and likewise, parents and adults are concerned that the bar is continuing to be open. Police say that yesterday afternoon, even after the raid, they witnessed what they believe to be drug deals at Joe's Bar. Belton and several other council members want to close the bar first and then hold the required hearings afterwards. The move is an unusual one. It hasn't been done in at least 10 years. Bar owners are usually given public hearings before their licenses are revoked. The council members say it's worth bypassing the usual process. Uh, this is a very serious matter. Uh, it's uh, by far the most serious matter I've seen in any of the uh, bars in Minneapolis uh, in the nearly 10 years I've been on the council. The city attorney will tell council members tomorrow whether the expedited action is legal, and if the council approves the revocation and the mayor backs it, the bar could be closed right away tomorrow. Is there any chance it would pass? There seems to be, at least among the council members we talked with, some real strong support for it. And if the, if the alderman from that ward supports it, that usually carries a lot of weight. This is a unique situation because the bar itself has not actually been charged. Now, police officially haven't said that people in the bar or owners or anything like that have actually been involved in the drug dealing, but the council members say that legally the bar is responsible and accountable for whatever happens within its four walls. All right. Thanks a lot, Trish. Several of the Cubans arrested yesterday had lived in an apartment building which may have been deliberately set on fire overnight. Flames gutted the building at 3421st Avenue South in Minneapolis and investigators suspect arson. An apartment where one Cuban suspect lived was ransacked after midnight and authorities believe whoever did it may have returned later and torched the place. There were no injuries but 10 people are homeless tonight. Fire officials are also investigating the cause of a blaze along Hennepin Avenue early this morning. The call came in shortly before 3 a.m. and the fire was contained to the second floor of a four-story apartment building. Two people were treated for smoke inhalation and later released. There is no damage estimate available just yet. Don? The Children's Home Society announced plans today to open six crisis nurseries this fall for children who are potential abuse victims. At a news conference this morning, Mayor George Latimer said the $250,000 project will provide safe haven for youngsters while their parents work out stressful situations. Children may be placed in one of six private foster homes for up to three days at a time. A similar nursery has been in operation in Minneapolis for almost two years now, and last year nearly 700 children were placed there. Another 400 were forced to be turned away. St. Paul has begun private fundraising efforts for this project. A 27-year-old Oakdale woman pleaded guilty today to charges of murder in Washington County District Court for smothering her eight-month-old daughter last summer. In exchange for having the charge against her reduced from first-degree murder to second-degree, Doris Ayer will be sentenced to a longer prison sentence than is called for by the sentencing guidelines. Ayer will be sentenced to 15 to 20 years in prison. She'll be sentenced on May 29th. A remodeling project for the Fauché Tower that will cost more than what the building cost when they built it in the first place. The story coming up on the 6 p.m. report. If you're tired of driving all over town looking to save lots of green on a new car, if you keep falling into the new car buying trap, if you don't want to be lost or roughed up, then cart yourself over to Hopkins Dodge, where $49 down puts you behind the wheel on this new Dodge Colt. That's right, only $49 down drives it away. Call us now for instant credit approval, because at Hopkins Dodge, we'll help you make the impossible shots and deals that'll make you flip, too. When you come to Hopkins Dodge on Highway 7... Billy Margolis hated to paint. Then he found Easy Roller, the roller that feeds itself automatically. Now Billy paints a room in no time. No messy pans. He just fills the Easy Roller tank once in a while and keeps on rolling. Room after room. It's fast and it's easy. Hey, Mitch. Mitch! Do you have a room I could paint? Huh? New Easy Roller by Easy Painter. It might make painting fun. 
Small businesses don't always get as much attention as the big ones. The travelers doesn't think that's fair. That's why they designed a money management plan for small operations like Bob's Orchard and why they offer group life and health plans to companies like this trucking outfit with as few as two employees, and gave Margot's little bakery customized business insurance. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. They deserve a fair shake. At the Travelers, we believe fairness is good business. There's something new at Rosedale. Everything. Everything. A shining spring. Hot new colors. Bright new looks. Wow. Rosedale's got it now. Rosedale shines. Now, a lot of anglers believe that fish grow bigger in lakes that the local residents won't let you put a boat on. Getting into Fort Knox may be easier than launching a boat in some of the many popular lakes uh, west of Minneapolis this summer. Don, state officials claim there is not enough free public access, but that does not stop Lakeshore residents from wanting to keep their waters exclusive. After more than a decade of this stalemate, today the state sought condemnation rights to build a public boat launch on one such lake. Mike Strand has that story. Like most Minnesota waterways, the 274-acre Christmas Lake in West Suburban Shorewood is public. But like many metro area lakes, the problem is all surrounding property is privately owned. The one dirt access road is deemed inadequate by state officials. And in a highly charged meeting before state executive officers today, the DNR requested the right of eminent domain to improve public entry. Are you assuring us that this is the last point, that, there, that all other uh, efforts have failed? I have done everything that there is possible, that is possible to do to get a public access on Christmas Lake, and that's the reason I'm here today. I wouldn't be here if I thought there was some way that I could sit down this afternoon and settle this. I wouldn't be here. I'd be out there negotiating. I absolutely cannot do it. But Christmas Lake homeowners say they offered to provide land for a public boat launch with the stipulation that no high-speed boats be permitted on the lake. The DNR rejected that as unfair. So the commissioner is asking you for the power of eminent domain to spend an additional, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars to accommodate a few water skiers. Council members eventually postponed the DNR's request, saying there are too many unresolved factors, including a similar struggle over access on nearby Lake Minnetonka. My heavens, if you have a lake cabin up in northern Minnesota and you want to so much as alter one foot of sand, you can't do it. And now you're coming in and saying we got to have car spaces for 750 vehicles. That's like transferring Metropolitan Stadium out there. The Executive Council will again consider the eminent domain question when it next meets June 5th. In the meantime, a visibly upset Joe Alexander of the DNR is again being encouraged to seek lake access through negotiation and compromise. Mike Strand, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. First bank officials say they may file a labor complaint against union workers at the Hormel plant in Austin. The bank is upset by a negative campaign launched by the union following wage cuts by the company last fall. Members of local P9 are gearing up for picketing outside First Banks throughout the upper Midwest. They have also asked members of other unions to withdraw their money from First Banks. First Bank spokesman James Eulen said that amounts to a secondary boycott which is illegal. For more than 40 years, the Fauché building towered over the Minneapolis skyline. But the 1929 edifice is due for a facelift. Plans were announced today to restore all 32 floors. Tiles will be removed to show the original marble walls. Brass will be polished back to its original shine. And new heating systems and chandeliers are also part of the plan. Total cost of the renovation, $4 million. That is more than the original construction cost of the Fauché Tower, which ran closer to $3 million. Don? Minneapolis and St. Paul were big participants in an international birthday party today. In the Minneapolis courthouse bells rang out the music of composer Johann Sebastian Bach to mark the 300th anniversary of the man's birth. In St. Paul, Minnesota, radio, public radio broadcast its first live transatlantic broadcast from, from Eastern Europe, a Bach program from his birthplace in Leipzig, East Germany. Many gathered this morning at Westminster Presbyterian Church to hear more of the master's works. And here's some for your enjoyment. You'll love the all-new Shrine Circus because there's so much there to enjoy. Sensational aerialists, 
world-renowned acrobats, juggling and balancing acts. We'll dazzle and delight you with giant but gentle performing elephants. There'll be animals galore, and you'll find the world's funniest clowns at the Shrine Circus. It's non-stop entertainment, and it's for everybody at your house. Don't miss the Osmond Shrine Circus coming Thursday, March 28th to the St. Paul Civic Center. Meet Bob the Baker and his fiancée, Edith. Bob wants to bake Edith the most beautiful wedding cake using only the finest ingredients, but that can be expensive. Edith says that the man she marries will have to be very cost conscious. Bob insists on the finest quality. Edith insists on low prices. Today, Bob and Edith were happily married because Bob proved that by shopping at Rainbow Foods, you can have your cake and eat it too. Cheer up. Take heart. You need never be intimidated by some software again. Because now, there's ability. Business software that's easy to learn. Business software that's easy to use. You've always had the drive to get ahead. You've always had the ability. But now, you have the ability. The sound centers are overstocked with new Sonys of every kind. And it's time for a breakthrough. With genuine Sony Betamax recorders. At just $2.99. With hi-fi ready Sony Betamaxes that were $4.99. Now just $3.99. And Sony's best complete stereo Betamax with wireless remote was $7.99. Wow, look at that, just $5.99. Similar savings on Sony's of every kind throughout all three sound center stores in Minnetonka, Richfield, or Roseville. I was a bit worried today when I opened up the window and saw the clouds. We had some high thin clouds. Showers just to the north of the Twin Cities, all the way from uh, Alexandria through Mille Lacs Lake and just south of Duluth, but uh, didn't affect us really. 57 degrees today, warmest day so far this year. Oh, I love to say that each day as we climb up a few more degrees. Look at those temperatures, well up into the 50s and the 60s overall, the southern part of the five-state area and down into the uh, central plain states. Our high temperature today, as we said, was 57, 33 for an overnight low, so we're continuing to remain above freezing, and uh, that's melting off uh, even those uh, persistent snow banks out there right now. Still a lot of clouds in the southeast, still a lot of rain down in the southeast, causing some problems there. There's a little band of clouds that's producing a little bit of shower activity just to the north of us, and a big bank of clouds moving in from the west that's the weather maker for the weekend for us, unfortunately. You can see on the radar right now where the showers are just north of us, very light, very scattered, moving east, not affecting us. We just remain under that high, thin overcast that's been persistent throughout the day. Other parts of the country, down to the southeast, a lot of rain. Uh, last night, rainfall amounts of two and three inches were not uncommon. And again today, with some of the heavier activity now down over Florida with showers and thunderstorms, and there's the little light shower activity to the northwest of us and also out to the west. But this is just the makings of what's going to take place for us. Right, what we have going on right now is a high pressure system just to the east of us. The southerly winds today is what boosted our temperature up to 57 degrees. There's the mess down in the southeast. This is the one coming in from the west with the clouds spreading eastward, snows in some of the higher elevations. This is going to pick up a little shot of cold air behind it. We're saying that by Saturday night and into early Sunday morning, it could become mixed with snow here locally. Well, winter's not quite over with yet, is it? By tomorrow, though, that front's gonna be right on top of us, so watch for an increase in clouds. Maybe some rain developing on the western borders of the state by tomorrow night at this time, but it looks like we'll have some light shower and rain shower activity throughout the day on Saturday, and again, possibly turning a little bit colder on Sunday and changing over to a mixture of rain and snow. Meantime, though, tomorrow, back up into the 50s over the southern part of the state. Here's the cooler air out to the west. Temperatures in the south still remaining in the 60s and the 70s. Our snow cover, in case you're wondering and still want to go up and get some last licks in, all we have left here, left here are just a few snow banks, no snow to the south. 8 to 18 inches, though, still up in the extreme northern and northeastern part of the state. Now, this was taken yesterday morning, so we melted snow yesterday, we melted snow today. If you're going to go up the weekend, we'll melt snow tomorrow, but I think there'll still be some left if you want to go way up there. Mostly cloudy, temperature of 54 degrees, 52% humidity, south winds at 12, 3002, and the barometer is falling. Our forecast then, partly cloudy, mild tonight, 37 degrees for an overnight low. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy and mild, 55, southeast winds at 10 to 20. Mostly cloudy, though, tomorrow night as that storm approaches from the west, 37, and a chance of rain on Saturday with a high of 45. Well, Sunday, rain, snow mixed. 
uh, Monday, partly cloudy, another chance of rain on Tuesday. Temperatures are going to fluctuate a little bit. We'll get down into the 30s through part of the weekend and then back up into the 40s the first part of next week. Now you're sneaking that rain in on, in on Saturday, huh? <laughs> uh, and Sunday. Yeah, do you mm. notice that, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Busy day one at the State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. And that story leads sports with R.J. Fritz. He's up next. Give us a B. Give us a U. Give us an R, L, I. Give us an A. Give us a G. Give us a T, O, N. Come on, Mom. Give us Burlington. Burlington Coat Factory has everything kids need for Easter. This American-made, top-quality vested suit can be worn year-round, and at $34.75, it's a fantastic buy, like our famous label dress shirts for $9.99. Come on, Mom! Give us Burlington! The Burlington Coat Factory for the clothes kids cheer about! The rush is on to Dotson North for the March Markdown Marathon Sale. 8.8 .8 annual percentage rate factory financing on all two- and four-wheel drive Nissan pickups. Plus $88 over factory invoice on selected 1985 two- and four-wheel drive pickups, Centras, and Stanzas. 100 Nissans on sale now till March 30th. It's north to Dotson North. Going north, the rush is on. The March Markdown Marathon Sale at Dotson North, 7810 University Avenue Northeast in Fridley. Burger King presents Good News, Bad News. The good news is, now Burger King has breakfast, featuring our light, flaky crisp sandwich, filled with golden eggs and melted cheese, topped with your choice of sausage, bacon, or ham. The bad news is for McDonald's, because our crisp sandwich just beat the stuffing out of Egg McMuffin for best taste. So good morning, crisp sandwich. Good night, Egg McMuffin. Aren't you hungry for Burger King now? You talked, and at W Light 103 FM, they listened. You said you enjoy a wide variety of music, including your favorite oldies. And 80% of you who listen to W Light said a lot of music is very important. Most of you who listen to KS95 told us a lot of music is important to you, too. You don't have to say it twice. You want more music? Listen to W Light 103 FM. It's light rock and less talk. State High School basketball, two sites today. Minneapolis North dominating the first game of the Class AA today at the St. Paul Civic Center. 83-54 for Tony Queen's Polars and some pretty fair outside shooting propelled North. Here's number 22, Bobby Walker with two of his 18 points. Brett McNeil had 13 for North. Here McNeil gets three after uh, being fouled. Or, wait a minute, this is Doug Carter from uh, way out. And this is Brett McNeil with 13. Carter had 23 to lead North. And there's the three-point play. Now watch this great play by North's Tony Adams coming up. He makes a steal right there and goes in for a dazzling helicopter layup. The spin and the two. 83-54 for North. Tim Blumentritt high for the cadets with 18. North will play Duluth Central tomorrow night in the semifinals on the strength of a 50-plus percent from the floor in the first half. The Trojans went on to a 59-50 win over Rochester John Marshall. Duluth took advantage of rocket turnovers to build a 12-point halftime lead. All they did was control the ball with smart passing in the second half. A solid uh, team win for uh, that club. Tonight in double A, quarterfinal play, Bemidji takes on Jefferson at 7.30. That game will be followed by Wilmer and White Bear Lake, the defending champions. White Bear looking for win number 50 in a row. Both games will be at the Civic Center. At Williams Arena today, top-rated De La Salle opened the Class A tourney, beating Twin Valley 50-46. All-state guard Damon Dragotis there. All the way for 19 for the Islanders. Dragotis often turns steals into layup, and here's two. And on to the semifinals. The Islanders will face Tiny Ceylon, which beat Cedar Mountain 53-44. Now, Ceylon High School has just 45 students, including one with the last name of Fritz. Number 31, Todd Fritz there. Oh, well, that must be, has to be a relative. Elsewhere, Cedar Mountain losing to Ceylon, as we said, uh, and in Class A basketball, Winona Cotter will uh, now play Lesseur tonight at 7, and unbeaten Glenwood takes on Greenway in the 9 o'clock game. NCAA today, East Regional. It's tied at the half. Illinois of the Big Ten and Georgia Tech 29 all. In the mid Midwest Regional, it's Oklahoma and Wayman Tisdale leading Louisiana Tech 32-28 at the half. And if Tech upsets uh, or expects an upset, Carl Malone must uh, stay as hot as he was. 
first six went in for Malone. Quietly, he's one of the nation's premier college players. This man may be one of the more publicized. Wayman Tisdale, as we said, coming up here. It's a quick, a quick turnaround for the Sooners. And the winner will face the victor of the Memphis State-Boston College game. And the road to Lexington continues tonight on Channel 4. Georgetown and Loyola, 8 o'clock, that'll be live. Then at 11, we'll bring you the tape delay, Illinois and Georgia Tech, as they continue the battle. All right, good. Very exciting stuff. And don't forget we have the Presidential News Conference coming up here on Channel 4. And we'll see you after the early game. George, you've got MCI long distance. Think it's right for my business. MCI? Wall Street's top banks and brokers use it. Five of the big six automakers, nine of the top ten oil companies, plus hundreds of thousands of other businesses save hundreds of millions of dollars with MCI. But I'm a small plane. Planes? Six top airlines use MCI for interstate calls anytime, coast to coast. Call MCI. We sound better to business. It's difficult, Mother. Patient, dear. How much longer? It's almost time. Four o'clock. Now. A dozen filet of fish sandwiches, please. Every Friday during Lent, after four o'clock, McDonald's filet of fish sandwiches cost only 49 cents. That's every Friday till Easter 